Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome back to episode four of our Let's Play series, Roll the Waves 3 as Japan, starting in 1890. Uh, what a time we've been having so far. We are currently with rising tensions with China, with a little bit of an eye towards the European powers who are rising their tensions with us as well. We currently are running at a deficit in the budget, but we've seen our budget grow by almost 44% in the last episode, so that was really, really well received. I want to say as well, I've started a uh, new book uh, that I really have been enjoying. It is long, it is dry, so if those two things put you off, maybe don't look into it. Uh, but I've been getting into Donald Keene's uh, Emperor of Japan. And it really just speaks to uh, the Meiji Restoration and the Emperor at the time, which kind of fits in little, at the very least in the first half of the book very much, predates uh, the years that we're playing here. But I always like to have some good reading accompany the games that I'm playing. So if you're interested in that at all, please do check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below so you can go find it if you would like. That all being said, let's dive into the game. Just a quick recap here, we have our first battleship which was delivered from Great Britain, the Fuso, the first in the line uh, that is currently working up and that finally gives us a good advantage. So if we have a chance for war with China, we will probably now take it. And under construction, we have another Fuso arriving in nine months number of heavy cruisers arriving in 14 and 15 months, and another Fuso, which we just started, coming in 25 months. So hoping we can get the budget to expand just a little bit more, uh, but if it does not, we still have enough capital on hand in the Treasury uh, to complete the second Fuso class before we have to change tack in where we're going. So with that being said, let's go to the next month so that's really good news actually so we have naval guns research for 11 inch quality negative two but that's going to be expected as you know you kind of work your way up in the quality and we're at the very beginning of the game so i'm just thankful that we've got something that's got a little bit more punch to it uh, that we can build domestically without having to rely upon foreign powers so there's that. We have tension increases with China twice uh, due to historical anonymity and random tension changes. The U.S. has a heavy cruiser Seattle that's going to be done in three months. They also have a new New York uh, heavy cruiser, the top speed of 20 knots, belt armor of four inches, so pretty standard there. Germany increased their naval budget. Okay. So we now see that China, we are very much so on the brink of war. We are, could happen any month now. And it's something that we probably want to look at from our ships and service to make sure that we're in good standing uh, should a war arrive. So we can see from looking at this, we do have the Fuso that's working up. We know that. I think next turn, though, it should be finished working up. So not really too worried about that. Crew quality is looking good across the board. Everybody has a good commanding officer. Uh, now we have one in charge of the Tokiwa that is below average, but we don't really have the prestige to be this early in the game to be throwing around a change in commander there for that. I guess the one benefit that we do have is although they are below average, they also have the special trait of gunnery expert, so I think that's a good thing. We see in our division editor that we have everybody in appropriate divisions. They're all attached to support the flag, which is the Fuso, and everybody has a commander, so I'm happy with that. The experience of the second battle division, which is our flag, is poor, but again, that's just going to come with time as we get worked up and as the ship is actually in the Navy. So I think, I think I'm feeling pretty good. We could, I'm wondering if we can accelerate the construction though on this Fuso. So that bought us an extra month at the cost of 200 
per month. I think we're going to do that because ultimately, although we increased our monthly expense, we also have one less month. Certainly, we do spend more total dollars, uh, but getting at that extra month ahead of schedule. And yeah, I think that's a fair trade-off. So we're going to do that. So accelerate the construction there of the Yashima. Germany increased naval budget. Great Britain increased naval budget. Such wonderful news. And China increased tension due to historical uh, factors. Yep, war is coming. Winter is coming. Something like that. Go to the next month. Uso finished working up. Uh, the rebels in the French Antilles have been eradicated. Folks building new ships. Good tension with France is reduced, Italy is reduced, and China increases tension. I think next war we will see, or excuse me, next month we will see war. Slip of the tongue there. Oh my goodness, these damn operas. I need to figure out if there's some type of setting to like prohibit arts from being performed on our ships because crew training has suffered again. After a naval visit by China, you were asked to comment on the visiting ships. So really, given this, I mean, war, war is going to happen. So do we maybe just try to get an extra prestige point out of it? I wish this was an event that gave tension or gave budget. Yeah, let, let's just push us all the way to war. All right. And more setbacks on the scientific front. And we have, yep, all the events we've already covered. War has broken out between Japan and China. War, it's here. No opportunity for surprise attack, that's unfortunate. Allow us now to turn our attention to a broader look at the situation in war with China. Really, from a strategic considerations perspective, there's a few things I want us to think about. First is, let's start on an optimistic note. Let's assume this war goes well. Let's also assume they have the potential to either in this war, or maybe it's even the next war, uh, take a Chinese possession as a result of the peace treaty. If there's one that we particularly want to focus on, it is probably highlighted in uh, that salmon color there, the Latung Peninsula. Uh, this is actually home to Port Arthur as well. Its fortifications at present are relatively low with only one battery. So this presents an opportunity to perhaps take that possession if we're successful in the war. Second, let's think about on a slightly more pessimistic yet realist tone. We have a current blockade risk. The Chinese blockade strength is 118. The Japanese blockade, blockade strength is 97. And in that situation, China only needs a strength of 107 to successfully blockade us in the Northeast Asia theater. That's going to pose a challenge for us then in the early months of the war. As the Fuso is delivered, and hopefully after successful fleet engagements with the enemy, we should see that balance shift ever so slightly. However, at the beginning, we will be under blockade, and it's something we need to fight against constantly. Now, the next consideration is that Hokkaido actually is at risk of being invaded. So there's no fortifications today, and it is a territory that can be settled upon in a peace agreement. Uh, really, Japan only has one territory, and that's the home island there, uh, that cannot be sued for in a peace negotiation. Lastly, we have a possibility of the war escalating. So China has very favorable relations with Germany and Great Britain, whereas our tensions with Germany and Great Britain continue to increase. Seeing Germany or Great Britain enter this war on China's side would pose a significant risk for us, especially considering that Great Britain already has naval assets protecting the Southeast Theater Box with some of the territories that they do have in that area. Next, let's do a little bit of a fleet comparison between our country, Japan, and China. Let's start with battleships. For ourselves, we have two battleships in active service. 
We have the Fuso class, which was just recently launched. And then we have a legacy battleship that we started the game with. Fuso sports four 13-inch guns and is very modern by the standards of the time we're in. Whereas our legacy ship uh, is, is probably going to face some challenges in battle. The battleship area is where we have the most concern with China, as they are actually sporting 14 different battleships in their active fleet, with about half that number in current build capacity through foreign producers. So we are very unevenly matched here. In terms of quantity, it's a 7 to 1 advantage to China. In terms of tonnage, it's a 3 to 1 advantage to China. Now we do have a little bit of an upper hand though, in the sense that the Fuso is more modern and sports better armament. With four 13 inch guns, that's preferable to the eight Chinese battleships sporting four 12 inch guns and the six Chinese battleships sporting four 10 inch guns. At the end of the day though, one battleship even with superior force can't handle 14 battleships by itself. That poses a very real risk to us. Next, looking at heavy cruisers. Here, the playing field is a little more level, uh, but not quite to where we can be uh, dominant in this area. We have three heavy cruisers, uh, two of them being legacies with four seven inch guns, and then one newer class that we've been working on that has four eight inch guns. When we look at the Chinese fleet, they have four, four, eight, four, heavy cruisers sporting four eight inch guns and then they have two heavy cruisers sporting seven inch guns one of them has two seven inch guns the other has four seven inch guns here again china has an advantage but from tonnage we're looking much more favorable compared to the battleship considerations and you know three against six that's two to one odds it's certainly better than seven to one when we take a look at the light cruisers though, this is actually where we see that we have the upper hand. We have a total of 13 light cruisers in active service. Eight of them with eight inch guns, four with six inch guns, and one with five inch guns. China, meanwhile, only has four light cruisers in their entire fleet, and those are all sporting two eight inch guns. We have a numerical and tonnage advantage here in terms of light cruisers. This is something that we'll try to take advantage of during the war. So let's think about the orders that we're going to start with. First, trade protection. We're going to put all of our corvettes to trade protection. Requirement is three for trade protection. We have three corvettes. How perfect. The next is we really want to build the fortifications in Hokkaido. Frankly, this was a miss on my part. I should have thought about this far before we actually got to the war being active with China, as this will clearly be their target for invasion. And it would be really devastating for us to be knocked down to only our home island in terms of a result of this war. I mean, that, that would cripple us for much of the playthrough as we try to recover economically, as we are already behind economically most other nations. We also want to try to prioritize the completion of our Fuso class battleships. Uh, we will probably never be able to, to match in this war the quantity of battleships that China has, but with two to three Fuso class battleships, that poses a serious risk to the inferior Chinese battleships that they'll be able to bring to bear. Now, the last thing is that we want to be very mindful of our battle selections. I have to be conservative in this sense as we consider that I don't actually get to control any of the battles, I have to rely upon our AI auto resolve. I don't, <laughs> I have not yet built up a great level of trust with the auto resolve functionality. And one bad selection in taking an engagement could result in the devastation of our entire fleet and the end of the war with the per worst possible outcome. So, what we're going to try to do is avoid fleet battles wherever possible that may see China trying to bring their battleships onto the field. What we would rather do is try to engage in cruiser actions, convoy, defense, etc., where we can hopefully try to use our light cruiser advantage to overwhelm the enemy. With that, let's hop right back over to the game and start seeing how this war is going to shake out. 
As we discussed, we're going to go ahead and take our three Corvettes that we have in Northeast Asia, and we're going to set them all to trade protection. And this then fulfills our trade protection requirements of three ships working on protecting our merchant fleet. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is actually look at building fortifications in Hokkaido. And you can see that today we have none whatsoever. And let's go ahead and put in some four inch coastal batteries. It's going to take six months. And let's go ahead and put in four four inch coastal batteries into Hokkaido. Maintenance cost is quite minimal once they are ultimately produced. What we see now is that our deficit has really grown, uh, losing 2,300 funds each turn. And our budget actually has not increased as much as I would have liked in a war footing. So we started with about $144,000 a year. We're now at 153. Uh, that represents, you know, at best, what, an 8 9% increase in funds. Uh, really would have liked to. Uh, to have gotten more support from the government here as we're fighting a war as the underdog. So we're going to look at ships under construction, and I think what we're going to have to do is this Awati-class heavy cruiser. We're going to halt that construction for a couple of turns, probably just until the Fuso is finished here. Actually, we don't need to halt construction. So we're three turns away from the Fuso being delivered. That will actually then bring us just about even and we have enough money on hand to go three uh, months. We're going to hit turn, and we're going to see what type of battle engagements we're going to start with. So right at the beginning, we have what we're looking for, which is a cruiser action. So let's jump into the battle and see how this goes. All right, so we see that we have three of our heavy cruisers and three of our light cruisers uh, that were deployed in this cruiser action. And it does appear to be nighttime currently. So I'm, I'm a little less than thrilled by that because in a nighttime battle, especially without any doctrine or training, this early in the, the game in 1890, really anything can happen here. Let's go ahead and auto run the battle though. So we're not going to have any interruptions, and we can pause uh, to see how things are going. But ultimately, this is just going to let the AI take complete control. I'm going to zoom out here to follow. So we've now engaged the enemy, and I'm going to pause here. I'm sorry, the auto resolve goes very fast. So th this is almost kind of the worst case of what I was fearing. Uh, we have currently a cruiser advantage against the enemy. But in this night action, really, <laughs> anything is going to happen here. Absolutely anything could happen here. We have the Unebi, uh, which has not of yet taken any hits, it would seem. It has fired one round in total. But it finds itself uh, completely surrounded uh, by the enemy. And it's going to be tough for the Unebi even to get out of there. Let's go ahead and I'm going to unpause. This is probably going to go pretty quickly, so we'll pause again in a second. Okay, so the Unebi has now taken some hits. It's taken one medium hit. Uh, so no flooding or anything like that. So nothing too much to worry there. The Unebi only has three and a half inches of belt. So at this range, uh, the enemy's eight inch guns, I'm assuming eight inch guns is what we're facing here, uh, is probably able to penetrate at that distance if they can hit. Uh, the hit percentage is of course a whole different matter. We're now in twilight, so I'm hoping that with twilight we're actually gonna be able to identify what it is we're up against. Okay, so we can see two of the different classes we're against. The Shen Wei class has six eight inch guns and three and a half inches of belt armor. So that's a pretty decent heavy cruiser. And the Tsai Yun class here has two 8-inch guns and two inches of belt. So that light cruiser, that's paper thin. That's, that's almost definition of paper tiger there. 
So I think there's a lot of opportunity if there's a couple of those C N uh, class ships. Uh, any of my pronunciations that I may be getting incorrect, um, please accept my apologies. If any experts do have better pronunciations in the comments, I'm always welcome to try to, to learn and improve uh, how I'm handling these names. The Unebi has actually taken out two hits, um, both of medium damage, which is not great. I'm kind of worried about where they're going uh, as they seem to be breaking away from the rest of the force here. But this is going to be a, a difficulty uh, for both myself and I'm imagining the viewer here. Uh, we're going to, throughout the entire series, uh, we're going to have to trust the AI a little bit here and see, you know, can you play from 1890 to the end of the game and successfully only use the auto resolve feature and not go stir crazy as your ships wander out of formation uh, doing nonsensical things. Though I suppose for those who are used to combat at the tactical level and rule the waves series, that can happen even when you're controlling your own ships. Unpause here. The Unebi continues to go away. Actually may not have been a horrible decision as, you know, it kind of took the attention away from them and it can now perhaps catch up with the rest of the fleet. I wish the Izumi uh, and the Yama would be getting maybe a little closer to engage. Let's see. We now see a... Oh, no. There's a Panchao-class battleship. So we're going to have great difficulty in penetrating that nine inches of belt armor, even at this close range. And we now put ourselves subject to the, the devastation that those 10-H guns may, may bring. And then we have this Fei Yun class, six 8-inch guns, four inches of belt. So this, this is going to be a difficult battle for us. We see that the Tokawa has taken two medium hits, just as the Unebi has. Let's continue to see what happens here. It actually looks like perhaps the Chinese fleet is trying to break away. It looks like they might be pulling just a little bit of distance. And let's see. We're not taking hits on any of our ships, it looks like, since the last pause. Oh, did I see a flooding alert? I thought I did. Let's see. Maybe I misread. I thought I had seen a flooding alert. Oh, so yeah, the Sama limits flooding. So they took a hull hit but then they were able to limit any flooding that that was causing. So it looks like damage control just immediately solved the issue, but I do see the Asama now has taken two medium hits. I'm not certain we're going to have any luck in actually penetrating against, uh, well, maybe we would with the Shenwei here. And it may be, unless I've lost track of it, that we're no longer facing... A battleship here so it looks like intelligence is updated and it is just this heavy cruiser so that is really encouraging news for our our prospects now equally it looks like the enemy's formation is starting to break a little here as the Xiaoyang and the Zi um, Yun class pull a little distance away the Asama though has now taken five medium hits which is not ideal and I'm oh, sorry, wrong button. So it is targeting the Shen Wei. That gun quality is really hitting us. Hit chance of 1.44. And we're at a range of 3,600 yards. Okay. Let's just see what we've had. So it has scored a couple of hits on what we used to believe was the battleship, and I believe that battleship is actually this high yang class here.
Yeah, I the AI is doing all right. It's just I, I worry about losing this. Um, it continues to to take some damage. It now has some very minor flooding. But the enemy fleet's formation has really kind of broken up, and I think that's certainly to our advantage. Let's see if we can keep chasing them. The Unebi, I would like to get back into formation and for our light cruisers to maybe support the heavy cruisers more than they are right now. We seem to certainly be pulling speed on them as well. Why are we getting so close? That's a little confusing to me. Asama continues to be the focus of the enemy's fire. We're really going after them. I mean, the AI is not holding back. I had, I had heard that there was a tendency for the auto-resolve AI to be more conservative with its decisions, but that is not the impression I've gotten in this battle. So it looks like we are engaging their heavy cruisers with our three, whereas the Unebi looks like it's been trying to engage with these light cruisers here. Now they're going 15 knots, whereas we are actually going 19 knots. So I wonder if that's because one of their ships has taken some flooding they've had to slow down. Uh, I had thought that their cruisers were of similar speed, so I don't think it's related to that. Let's go back here and actually look at the log entries again. So turret A jammed, but they immediately got it back into action. This crew, despite all of the opera nonsense <laughs> that we have had going on, uh, has done a great job with kind of damage control on the Asama here. I'm very proud of them. So it looks like... Looks like we're having some success here with our, our hits actually hitting their target, which is very encouraging. So we'll keep the battle going. Got a couple more hits there, it looked like. What the strategy is of this Chinese fleet, I really don't know. Oh, fire. Excellent. So the Hei Yang class is now on fire. So, trying to see if we can see who actually got that hit that caused the fire. Maybe the Azuma. Azuma's done next to nothing and has received almost no attention. It continues to have turret A jamming, though. My goodness, that's really hurting our, our ability. And something we'll have to look at. And then the Takawa... Yeah, not, not much attention paid to you either. So really, the Sama is getting everything. But they are on fire, which bodes well, and it looks like they may have rudder issues as they are now spinning out of control. So this is where I think as the AI, they have a bit of a decision of do they focus on trying to finish off the Hei Yang, or do they continue with a 3-to-1 superiority against the Shinwei and let the light cruisers deal with the Hei Yang. So... It's going to be curious to see how this resolves. I think we missed our chance there with the light cruisers helping, but now they rush in a little late to the party. The Takawa looks like it has its rudder jammed. Yeah, it has a jammed rudder as a result of a critical hit that it received. So that's not great. Oh my. It's got its rudder repair now, which is a positive. This Shen Wei has really slowed down. It's down to 10 knots now. They were going, I think it was 15 just a moment ago. So I wonder again if that's evidence of some flooding that they've received. At Hai Yang, I really wish we could have maybe finished that off when it was on fire and had its rudder stuck. I mean, that's the opportune time there. Taking a lot of damage. We're starting to see flooding now on the Asama. They've taken 21 medium hits. A flooding level of 2. That's not great. Hopefully if we do lose the Asama, we can at least take out one of their heavy cruisers. That being said, given the numerical advantage that China has in this war, I can't really afford to be trading heavy cruisers one for one. I mean, that's not going to get us far in this war. 
It does appear, though, that we're going to probably be able to finish off the Chen Wei because it is completely detached from the rest of the Chinese formation. The Unebi continues to be a little wasp in a... I don't know what a good analogy would be there, but a little wasp attacking behind, distracting them a little. All right. The Asama. God, I almost wish they would just detach the Asama and let the other two heavy cruisers finish off the Shen Wei. They're at 14 knots now. I see the high speeds increasing the flooding. We, we don't need to chase quite so fast. This is frustrating. This is, this is going to be a very long Let's Play series as I sit here wishing I could control some of this. Uh, but it, it, this is the fun of it, too, uh, is trying to see how we manage as naval secretary and never actually being out at sea with our fleet. Oh, could we please just finish this thing off? We're getting hardly any hits, it would seem. Oh, did... Oh, it returned to port safely. Horrible news for us. So now we risk the Asama sinking through flooding and not actually having taken out one of their heavy cruisers. Will likely be considered heavy damage, but that is not the result we are looking for. Perhaps we can isolate this... Hey, Yang glass up here. I don't know, though. We are in between it and port. And that Unebi has just been a trooper. Look at it go. Let's try to finish this guy at least so we get something from this battle. Oh, we've let it slip fat past now, but it's on fire. That's good. Medium damage and on fire. Come on. Sink it before it gets back to port. This is the second time now it's been on fire. Heavy damage and on fire. We should get it now. I just, I worry about losing the Asama. Let's see how that flooding's doing. Ah, the flooding's getting worse still. The, the level has decreased though, which is positive. We continue just chasing this high yang. They've put out the fire. Now it's back on fire again with heavy damage. It's all but stopped. Come on, cruisers. This is where you go in. You put in a couple torpedoes, and then we all get to go home. All right. Uh, it looks like it is sunk. China has no ships left at sea, and the scenario is over. So we were the victor. Uh, we had one heavy cruiser that received heavy damage. The enemy lost a heavy cruiser and had one receiving medium damage. So overall, we, we did get the win. Uh, our total points coming to about 8,000 versus their 1,000. We look at the ship details here. Let's see who the heroes were. We, let's see. 8,000 damage points were inflicted compared to their 1,000. Really, it was all on the China Cruiser Division. Uh, well, on the Hai Yang here. So let's see by hit percentage. Wow, that's actually pretty, pretty good. So I think this is from our doctrine seeing the gunnery. Uh, focus that we've had coming into play here. The Asama, though, despite being in the lead, really had kind of the worst hit percentage. My goodness, medium hits took 29 medium hits. I really feel like this Shen Wei we, we should have taken out. 31 medium hits, 25 light. That was a missed opportunity, I think. All in all, though, uh, quite the the excellent first battle, I think, for the series uh, in Rule of the Waves 3. Very happy with that. So Japanese major victory. We, of course, get a nice boost there to the victory points. So the enemy does get 290 uh, victory points for blockading us, which we were expecting based off the math we were seeing. 
and our ally Russia sends a message they are not ready to join the war against China at this time. Oh, no. Uh, that's not great. Let's see. So, I don't think there's any benefits other than this one. We lose some prestige. I'm wondering, do we press it and, and say we demand their obligation? Or do we just say they can join when they're ready? I think we have to press it because we need the Russians' help. We should demand they fulfill their obligations. Oh, no. So they did not listen to that, and now our tensions are probably even higher. They are. Great. So I don't know that we can count on Russia saving us in this war. Uh, let's go another month. Nothing really to speak to there. Two more months until we get another Fuso. So a convoy attack. Oh, we want to attack a convoy. If it involves battleships, I'm going to be a little nervous, but let's give it a go. Please don't have the Fuso at sea. Don't have the Fuso at... Okay, so this does not include the Fuso. Um, so I'm, I'm encouraged by that. We are starting again in day, or it's just about to turn to day, it would seem. Let's go to auto resolve. Or actually, is it turning to night? Oh my goodness. So this is a convoy attack, and we are starting it right at twilight, right before it turns to night. This might get really messy. I don't know why we're doing this. AI just pull back, cut, <laughs> cut the losses, man. Don't, don't try to stumble into a convoy in the middle of the night without any prior training or experience in doing so. Oh my, okay, oh. Running right through them there. Maybe we can get lucky by taking out some transports, though, in the middle of the night before they get us. So it looks like maybe one we may have gotten there. There's another line of transports we're raking against. Again, if we can maybe just in the night sink a couple of them and then get away, that would be a successful battle for us, and we'd get some victory points. That Chiota uh, has just chosen to be by itself. And the Doctrine, I'm guessing that's the cruiser division that we have set to independent instead of core or supporting flag. We need to get out of there, though, before their cruisers respond. Now we're coming back north. A little clever of the AI there to, to pull their screening forces to chase the lone cruiser. Well, then the main force comes back north. Okay, so I think that's over. We sunk uh, three transports and heavily damaged one, though. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and China was the victor. We didn't lose any of our ships, though, so I'm not terribly upset by that. So they got a major victory. Uh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. So Russia is no longer our ally. They feel uncomfortable with our foreign policy. Why do I get the feeling war with Russia is coming while we're at war with China? So China's building some Corvettes. Okay. This is going to be difficult. I'm getting a little nervous about this playthrough now. Uh, one more month here until that Fuso is completed. Now we'll still need a little bit of time to get them worked up, uh, but it is encouraging that that's coming along. Uh, let's do one more month here. So this is a convoy attack. Let's go ahead and accept that. So they declined, so we got a nice victory point bump there. And then we have a fleet battle. Oh, a fleet battle. So the estimated enemy forces are three battleships. If our intelligence is right, and they actually accept this battle and we get the Fuso out there, we can probably take just with the Fuso three of their battleships, I would expect. However, it could be that the intelligence is wrong and they have 14 battleships waiting to uh, surround the Fuso and sink it. 
feel like we kind of have to go all in in this war because the longer it lasts, Russia or Germany are going to declare war on us. Uh, so we can't be affording to give up these victory points so early. Okay, so they declined. We got a nice boost there. A battleship engagement. Again, it's saying estimated forces are three battleships. We have to take it. That intelligence, if it's wrong, though, this really, really poses a problem for us. So the Fuso is on the field. Our flagship, our pride and joy of the entire Japanese fleet, is out there, ready to go. Let's see how good our spies are. If, if the intelligence was right, we should easily win this battle. If it's wrong, I might be starting a new Let's Play series in a couple of episodes as we end up getting uh, fired from the job. The initial scouting here is saying that the intelligence was wrong and they have more battleships than we had expected. The Fuso still outmatches them, uh, but not to the point where we can go... Although I guess it's three battleships, and that is what the intelligence said, so this might actually be right. So if it's those three battleships, we should be okay. The question is, will we be able to catch up uh, to the enemy? And can we force them to engage at all? Oh, heavy cruisers turned south there for a moment, but we're still in a chasing action. The longer this goes on, the probably the worse it is for us. Although... It's worth pointing out that in 1890 here, torpedo warfare is in its infancy, so I don't really worry too much about screening torpedo attacks in a chasing engagement. They've turned, however, it's turned to twilight, so we probably don't have much time left here until night and we're going to lose sight of them. Um, I just really, really hope that, oh no, they're running right into us. Please, AI, get them out of there. Don't, don't risk a nighttime loss of the pride of the fleet due to, oh no, get out, go home. Oh no, he turned the Fuso back around. Oh, we're having the Fuso cross the line in the middle of the night. But we may have sunk one of their battleships. Uh, the Pan Chow class. Uh, that was dead in the water there. I didn't get to see, though, if it was heavy damage or anything. So if we leave with that, then well done, AI, and I, I might start to become a little bit more trusting of you after these two battles. I still think it was very risky, though. I think it was very risky. It looks like they may be going home. Nope, they've now doubled back. I don't know what they're expecting to do here in the middle of the night, though. Let's see if they run into anything. Not looking like it, and we're almost at time. All right. So we were the victor, and we did sink one of their battleships. Uh, huzzah. What excellent news. I'm guessing that that was down almost entirely to the Fuso. Yeah, so it was the Pan Chow, and that's pretty much all the damage that they took. All right. Go ahead and close and close. Got a minor victory out of that, so 500 victory points in our favor. The enemy has sounded us out about a negotiated peace with us gaining disputed border areas in some of their colonies. The Prime Minister wants to know your opinion. Folks, considering we've lost our ally, Russia, I'm tempted to take this. Let, let's say these terms sound like a good basis for negotiations. Compromise peace. That does not sound like us getting favorable terms as mediated by France. Oh, the historical uh, returns are, are surfacing. Uh, aftermath of the war, the budget is considerably reduced. I don't think we got any territories from that. 
That's not good. Well, I guess it's not horrible. We look at these tension levels too. Oh, goodness. Is that really already the end of the war? The one episode war and we got no colonial possessions from it, no territories whatsoever. Our budget has been slashed. Oh my goodness. That's just awful. That's a it's a 33% reduction in our budget. We didn't take any territories. We're running at negative 5,700 budgeted turn now. The Fuso is about to finish, though, which will give us back 2,000. Okay. So I think we're going to put two of these heavy cruisers. We're going to halt their construction. And then with the balance we get from the Fuso finishing, that should be good. Well, I, I got to say, I was all hyped up for this war with China, uh, thinking that, you know, with Russia's help, we'd be able to to get some good results. Russia then backed out. Then China proposes that they give us some land. <laughs> Just a couple of months into the war, we say, that sounds great, because that's we weren't going to get more than a couple of territories. I mean, unless we annihilate their entire fleet, we weren't going to get more than a couple of territories. And at the end of the day, uh, European powers came in and said, let us settle this dispute between you. And the map stayed unchanged. That's frustrating. Well, Regardless, it was very exciting to see, though, the AI uh, auto-resolve function and some of the tension that went with that. Boy, I was sweating a little bit, uh, especially when it turned to night and the Fuso crossed <laughs> their line. That <laughs> felt like a very quick way to lose the pride of the entire fleet <laughs> and gaining nothing, but it turned out all right for us. So we're going to call it for an episode here. Any questions or feedback that you may have, please do leave them in the comments section below. Would love to hear from you. Uh, would like to hear any feedback you may have on how this playthrough is going of this fantastic game. And with that, Strategy Gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.